10. Hey. Hi guys, General Squatting here. Today I'm going to be painting this A Bomb Abomination from Zombie Side Season 3. Really cool model. Get him all primed up, ready to go. Now, what you see here, this is uh, Liquitex Airbrush Medium and a Flow Aid. Their Flow Aid added to it. I'm showing you this uh, to show you. I want you to thin the paint down at least one to one. That is Reaper polished bone that I'm going to use for the skin but you want this pretty runny and just start coating the skin area as you see there as I go on I'll explain why the technique that I'm using that you want the paint runny or that you want it thin in other words because I'm only going to be painting one coat alright the skin is done now I'm coming in with Age Bone by Reaper the Reaper Master Series this is bones that have come up through the skin almost like uh, padding like a football player would wear uh, so this also is watered down at least one to one if you're using other things like game color you'll have to water it down more than one to one but Reaper has a lot of flow aid already in it and it's not thin but uh, it does move over a model better so at least one to one perhaps maybe a little more I'm not worried about complete coverage and I'm not worried about even coverage either uh, the reason being is that skin tones especially on a zombie are not even and so I want it looking kind of blotchy continuing on painting the talons and the bones what I'm trying to do is get those darkened up I skipped a section here I mixed uh, bone shadow and the age bone together I want the talons to get darker as they go out to the tips so that's what I'm doing here then there will be a final it wasn't still dark enough so then I used a final dark shade of uh, wood stained brown by Reaper to darken them up and that's what I'm doing here just getting the tips darker I'm not worried this is a gaming piece I'm not worried about an even uh, coverage and or a uh, even kind of fade now I'm going ahead and doing the clothing which is uh, privateer press p3 signar blue base <clears throat> this is watered down a little bit more than one to one uh, I don't want this equal coverage I'm only going to do one coat of this color and you'll as we go on you'll see exactly why I'm doing it this way now I'm going back in and doing some defining of the shadows by uh, making additions as you see there between the legs and some of the shadow areas I want them just slightly darker than the rest of the miniature I mean at this point this first coat it looks really blotchy and uneven but that's exactly what I want and there's a completed process now I'm going to do washes and I'm doing this and I'm showing you this in real time because normally I would use inks but a lot of you might not have inks so pretty much everybody seems to have the GW uh, washes so I have three different uh, drops of water there and that's just distilled water everybody should have washes and water so there's no flow aid in this process no special things that you might not have and that's why I'm showing you this uh, real time 
I'm going to skip ahead and I'll show the red here in a moment. There's the red. You want to thin these down pretty well. Uh, two to one, three to one, somewhere in there. You see what, how, how much I'm putting in there. I'm also going to be adding a green color. You want to keep them separate. But I don't accomplish that. My green or my red runs into my green. But thin it way down. And there goes the red. Now, notice the drop of water right there. This technique is going to work. What we're trying to prevent is water marks or hard edges. So go ahead and wet the model with just plain distilled water or just plain tap water, which is what this is, I believe. Um, you don't want to flood the model, you just want to get it damp. And you'll see why in a moment. This will help prevent, uh, especially with the GW washes, hard edges that are hard to get rid of and hard to prevent but you can prevent them but for somebody that might not have known how to fix that now watch as this is painted on the water already on the model breaks the surface tension so it just the wash just shoots off the brush it just leaches off really really quickly far more effectively than it would do if the model were dry and that's the reason why uh, I'm showing you this because this will prevent hard edges and also as we go to the other colors here they will blend together really really easily now I went a little overboard on the purple I wish I had not as used much purple as I did because it kinda flooded out the red but oh well hindsight so just go around the model putting the wash wherever you wish to now since he's got this bulbous arm, I'm going to paint these bulb areas like growths, cancers, sores, whatever. So I want them to be green. But as it's painted on, all the colors blend together really, really nicely. And there's no hard water edges or water marks left by the washes. skipping head, just continuing to go around the model to see the face has been done, going back and reinforcing some of the green because I want it to really stand out on the model. I made a mistake as you'll see later on. I really should have chose a different skin to, well the skin color was fine. What I should have done was chosen a different color for the bones and made them a little darker so that they would separate. As you see there that is done all the way around the skin so you see how it all blends together and it's a simple technique with water and a wash now we're going in with the quick shade strong tone by army painter just dab it on everywhere oh and the GW washes were the Leviathan purple the Bale red and the Thraka green You don't want to. You don't have to use a huge amount. You don't want to goop it on, but you know, get a generous portion. Just start spreading it around. When you get kind of thin, just go back to your pot and get some more. All right, there's the process. There he continuing. Um, now I've got it all over the model. Now I'm going back with the same brush. Just as soon as I finish, it's going to start pooling. Now I'm starting to take off excess where it's pooling. Like right in that, that deep neck area, getting rid of that. And you're going to leave some there, but you want to get rid of whatever you think is unnecessary or will make too deep a shadow. And there it is done. Now it's just got to dry. Oh, also, I did the belt in black. I used Reaper Black Primer, and then I used for the belt buckle, I used uh, Hone Steel by Reaper. But there it is. That's what it looks like. I've come back and I've based it. Now it's dry. I just did that off camera. But the Army Painter is now dry. 
and now I'm going to go ahead and use uh, Tester's Dough Coat to coat the model. That's very important. You want to do that first before we start doing blood effects. Now you see it's all toned down, and there it is. Basically a finished model except for the blood work. And on the uh, base, it's just some ballast glued down I used for the base color, stone gray by Reaper, and then weathered stone by Reaper as a highlight that was uh, dry brushed on. I used a uh, black wash in between those two. Now I'm painting on Reaper Bloodstained Red. Excellent color that when dry looks just like dried blood. And also as I turned the model, I should have said it earlier, look at how the pants have very light areas and the bones have very light areas and it's blotchy but it creates natural highlights when you only use one coat and it's a thin coat and that's the reason behind it um, go back and pay attention to those and there'll be some other close-ups coming in but uh, especially on the the blue work it really stands out that you don't need to go back in and do highlights back over what you already done if you take and try this method. See how the jeans naturally look? Now we're coming in. This will be Blood Red by Reaper with a gloss varnish that we're going to put on for fresh blood. But you see there the uh, blood stain red that I've done the feet and around the base and certainly the chest and mouth area. But once again the blue looks like I've gone back in and done highlights. I have not. That is the purpose for doing just a single coat. And also on the bones you see there uh, how they have natural highlights because of a one thin coat. It's just my method. You know, I didn't want to have complete solid coverage. And if you look on this bony arm here that I'm working on now, when I turn it back around, coming out of his chest around the armpit area, there's a long bone that is a perfect example of what I was trying to accomplish with this model. Right there. See how highlighted it is? That's just the way it turned out because of the thin coats and thin coverage then with the army painter as it moved away from that particular area. So it's a very effective technique. It speeds up the process even more when you're using the armor painter method. So just continuing putting on the finishing touches. And there he is. If you got any questions or comments about anything, let me know. I painted the eyes in separate because I needed a visor to do that. And that's just linen white by Reaper. Well, that's it for this edition. This is General Splatton. I'll talk again. Dismissed.